After Obama intervened in the 2020 Democratic Party primary to prop up Joe Biden's dying campaign and get everyone else to drop out and coalesce around Joe Biden, he decided to join a live stream with Joe Biden. Um, and he made matters even worse than he already did. He proceeded to whitewash George W. Bush's legacy all so he can attack Donald Trump, make it seem as if Donald Trump is a unique evil in the United States and not just a trend of, you know, gradually evil presidents who commit war crimes and do bad things. Take a look. I am here to say that uh, help is on the way if we do the work, because, uh, there's nobody that I trust more to be able to heal this country and get it back on track uh, than my dear friend, Joe Biden. Uh, I, I don't think I have to reiterate the situation that we find ourselves in right now. It, things were tough in 2008, 2009. Uh, you know, we were going through the worst uh, recession since the Great Depression, uh, a massive financial crisis. We were still in the midst of two wars. Uh, you know, we, I think, were overcoming a decade in which the, the possibilities of common work and common purpose had been diminished and downgraded, and uh, government had been uh, starved of the resources that were needed to make us a more equal and just and um, compassionate society. Uh, and yet, I have to say that the, the foundation stones, the institutions that we had in place, uh, were still uh, more or less intact. Uh, my predecessor, who I disagreed with uh, on a whole host of issues, uh, still had a basic regard for the rule of law and the importance of our institution's democracy. Uh, on the world stage, there was still a sense that America needed to lead and that that leadership uh, meant that as imperfect as we might be, uh, there were certain ideals and values that we were gonna aspire to and advance and that we cared about human rights and we cared about uh, battling against uh, the oppression of peoples in distant lands and that uh, we tried to uphold uh, both in our own country but around the world certain core principles around uh, rule of law and uh, the universal dignity of people uh, and the need for us to uh, provide assistance to uh, those who are suffering either from natural catastrophes or uh, because of underdevelopment, uh, a sense that our alliances were important uh, and that we should stand up for uh, democracy and human rights. And, and so as, as challenging as those times were, and as much of a slog as it was to uh, yank the economy out of the economic crisis that, was, that it was in and and uh, in some ways, things were tougher uh, in terms of uh, the financial system uh, than they are today. Uh, but there was still a sense of, of, of a shared American idea that we could build on. Uh, and what we have seen over the last couple of years is a White House enabled by uh, Republicans in Congress and a media structure uh, that supports them uh, that has not just differed in terms of policy, but has gone at the very foundations of who we are and who we should be. This is infuriating to me. Because you can attack Donald Trump, orange man bad, we get it, right? But you don't have to rehabilitate George Bush's legacy in order to attack Donald Trump, in order to make a point about Donald Trump. You don't have to do this. And, you know, in 10 years, 12 years down the line, when we get someone worse than Donald Trump, 
someone like Tom Cotton or Matt Gates, an actual, you know, violent fascist in the White House, they're going to rehabilitate Donald Trump. Mark my words. They're going to rehabilitate him as, you know, a real president who actually respected the rule of law because this is what liberals do. They, you know, have a really short memory and, you know, they are going to say and do whatever suits the narrative that they're trying to, you know, communicate at that given time. But here's the thing. If you and Michelle like George W. Bush so much, Obama, how about this? Since you're both war criminals who should be prosecuted for committing crimes against humanity, how about we be kind to you and let you share a jail cell with him? You and George W. Bush can have a separate cell away from Donald Trump. How about that? So the love fest can continue. It's just, this is so frustrating. And anytime you have someone come out of Donald Trump's administration and they turn on Donald Trump, Anthony Scaramucci, I mean, uh, Omarosa, it doesn't matter who. Automatically, that person is a member of the resistance. No, they're part of the problem. Stop rehabilitating bad people. And we're starting to kind of see this now with John Bolton. And, you know, I talked about John Bolton's book because if what he's saying is true about Donald Trump saying that we should execute journalists, that's a really big deal, right? But in the process, I think that mainstream media, what they end up doing inadvertently is legitimizing these people who should not be legitimized. We can do two things at once. We can acknowledge that John Bolton is giving us some information about Donald Trump that is valid, perhaps, but at the same time, we have to acknowledge that John Bolton should be in prison for the rest of his life for his involvement in the Iraq war. Like, we can't just give people a pass if they are terrible human beings, especially if they're war criminals. I'm looking at Henry Kissinger as well, and Democrats trying to rehabilitate him, Madeleine Albright. I mean, we have to stop looking at these people because they're not Donald Trump and therefore good by definition. That's not the way that things work. Um, but let's get to some specifics here. So first, Obama talks about the situation in 2008 and how we were in the midst of two wars. Guess what? We're still in the midst of those two wars because you didn't get us out of those two wars. Like Obama, he, you know, and the 2008 election, he materialized at the moment when I was kind of having my political awakening that hinged on my aversion to the Iraq war. I was very anti-war. I was against it. Um, and he let me down. That was my first experience with the Democratic Party and American politics. You let me down and we are still in those fucking wars that I thought you'd get us out of. So don't just casually say, oh, well, we were in the midst of two wars. We're still in the midst of two wars and you had the power to do something and you didn't. He also says, my predecessor, who I disagreed with on a whole host of issues, still had the basic, still had a basic regard for the rule of law and the importance of our institutions and democracy. I cannot believe he just said that. George W. Bush had a regard for the rule of law. First and foremost, he started an illegal war. The Iraq war was illegal. He also signed the Patriot Act into law. He tortured human beings. Under George W. Bush, he decimated the Fourth Amendment. He decimated the Eighth Amendment. And you have the audacity to claim that he supported the rule of law? What are you talking about? So it's not just like he's trying to rehabilitate George W. Bush and focus on the more, you know, positive elements of his administration, not that there were any, but he's literally lying to you. Obama is smart enough to know that George W. Bush had no respect for the rule of law, but he's lying about George W. Bush because this makes Donald Trump look bad. I mean, because you can't just criticize Donald Trump without making it seem as if George W. Bush was a good president. No, he was a worse president than Donald Trump. He was more destructive than Donald Trump. Now, he also said on the world stage, there was still a sense that America needed to lead and that that leadership meant that as imperfect as we might be, there were certain ideas and values we were going to aspire to in advance and that we cared about human rights and we care about battling against the oppression of peoples in distant lands. So he's bringing up two things. First of all, when it comes to the world wanting us to lead, no, that's just not true because poll after poll after poll showed that citizens in other countries viewed the United States as one of, if not the biggest threat 
to world peace and international security. So that's just wrong when it comes to our commitment to human rights, LOL, because Obama sat on his ass and waited to see how things would quote unquote play out at Standing Rock while armed mercenaries brutalized peaceful protesters at Standing Rock, okay? Obama had a supermajority. He could have created a single payer healthcare system, but instead he gave us a Republican plan. Now, sure, that was better than nothing, but he could have crafted a single payer system that would have saved lives, thousands of lives every single year. He didn't do that. I thought you cared about human rights. On top of that, in 2014, when Israel had their incursion into Gaza and they were bombing hospitals, what did Obama do? Just tepidly condemn them, uh, you know, really kind of hope, cross his fingers that maybe they'd stop rather than using his position of power to make them stop to declare Palestine a state, recognize it as a state, give them some leverage. But I mean, this is what we get from the United States. We get lip service to issues such as the rule of law and human rights, but they're not actually respected, right? And it, it's, it's so frustrating because George W. Bush should be regarded by everyone as one of the most destructive presidents in American history. The start of the Patriot Act and mass surveillance the start of never-ending wars. How could you in any way try to redeem the legacy of someone who started what we're still dealing with today? The problems that George W. Bush initiated, the wars he started, the crises he crafted, we're still fighting them. So, I mean, for Obama to do this, it's absolutely expected, but it's time that the left and liberals call out Obama. This is someone who is not your friend, he is your enemy. He is not just bringing down the Democratic Party in a worse way than Hillary Clinton with his influence, but people still respect him. They don't realize that this is an individual who talks about human rights, who's really articulate, you know, and smooth, so he's persuasive, but did you know that he was bombing grandmothers in Pakistan? Do you know how many children in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia he gave PTSD to because his drones were illegally policing their countries, killing their friends and families? I mean, Obama is a horrible human being. He's a terrible person, and I'm not going to dismiss the significance of you know his presidency the symbolism in electing the first black president that in and of itself i think is important but putting that aside his legacy is incredibly horrific and he's making matters worse by trying to rehabilitate george bush's terrible legacy and the left is making matters worse by not really having a serious conversation about obama right i think that there's too much obama worship in the democratic party and there should be zero worship in the democratic party any democrat should be running away from the legacy of barack obama any democrat should be running away from obama and not embracing him but when you see people running for congress with like pictures of obama you should be embarrassed of that this is a war criminal who should be in jail with his buddy george w bush and again i'm nice enough to allow them to set, to share a cell um we don't have to put trump in the same jail cell with them but they should be in jail they should be prosecuted and i say that knowing that it'll never happen because we live in a system where we don't actually support human rights we don't care about the rule of law because if we did these two war criminals would be in prison for the rest of their lives you know you 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 know you know the you know the thing You're getting nervous, man, man.